Hello and welcome back to an updated tutorial for the Simple Mobile Golf template. This new update adds a par mechanic, which implements a limiting amount of strokes per level. We'll go over uh, a few things that have been added. Uh, the main thing that has been added is now this new uh, whole info blueprint. The whole info blueprint holds the par number, which is the amount of uh, shots, the amount of shots that you're expected to take for this level, the whole name, and then a string for uh, the, the next level name. This is all instance editable, so when you drop it into the level, you could edit it over here. Um, if you leave this name set to none, it will not automatically load the next level. The par number, which in this case is set for three, after three shots by default, the level would be game over. But in the game mode, there's what is called the over par count. In this case right now, it is set to zero. But if you set it to one, this would allow you to... Uh, hit a bogey, which is basically a shot past the par count. So if you wanted them to have a maximum number of three shots, you'd set it for three, you'd leave the over par at zero. But if you wanted to give them one more over par, so basically four shots, four strokes, then you would set this to one. Uh, I've added a second level, so basically after you've sunk the shot, it'll load up the next level. As you can see, here's the next level. The whole info just holds the information. There's nothing else needed to know about that blueprint other than to drop it into level. To go along with the new blueprint, there's also this new sprite and texture. It basically is an indicator that it's in the level. Um, there's also a new HUD blueprint, which just simply adds this text to the top here. Uh, let you know the power count, what the whole name is, and then what current stroke you are on. Let's see, uh, that is in here under the HUD blueprint. Um, it has a sequence. The first sequence checks to make sure that that whole info blueprint exists. If it does, then it carries on and draws what the par number is and what the level name is. Um, the next step in the sequence is to check the for the golf player controller and then get the strokes and draw that on the screen. Fairly simple. This is added via the HUD class in the uh, game golf game mode. So you can name it, you can enable it or disable it just by simply clearing it out or leaving it there. Well, info. The golf ball has some slight changes then to it. it. After the ball has stopped, if it hasn't landed inside the the hole, the ball checks to make sure that it's not moving, sends a call to the game mode to begin checking whether or not there's uh, or over strokes, over the par strokes. Um, we've added a new thing as well to the game mode outside of just the par count. We now have a game over boolean. The reason for this is if the ball lands in the hole prior to this call, we go ahead and tick that to true. That way, whenever we do the next call for checking the strokes, if it is true, we already know the game's over, so the stroke count doesn't matter. It's already landed in the hole. So first thing we're doing is we're checking to see if the game's over. If it's not, then we go ahead and cast out to get that whole info blueprint. The whole info blueprint, if it is valid, then we go ahead and cast to the golf player controller, get the stroke count from it, get the par number from the game or the whole info blueprint. And then we also get the par over par count here. We compare and verify whether or not we're out of strokes. Here you would add basically like a pop-up menu, giving them the option to watch a video or something to carry on to repeat the level or just go back to the main menu or restart or go back to the levels, whatever, whatever you wanted to do here. This is, you know, 
the the level has failed at this point. This whole section is more or less just to verify that the player has not ran out of strokes. As usual, when the ball lands inside the hole, it calls for the finish level. Again, we check for the hole info. If it's not valid, then we go ahead and just print that the, it's missing and then let the player know that they finished the level with this many strokes. If it is valid, we will hold those same variables as we did before. If the stroke count is only one, then we nailed the hole in one. And then we finish the level out. That's where we set the game over and everything. So if the par number and the stroke count are the same, then we print out that they finished with the exact number of strokes. And then we finish out the level. If it's not exactly equal, then we print the string. And this string is more or less if the value of the stroke is greater or less than the par number, then we just print whether or not it's a birdie, a birdie or a bogey. Birdie being understrokes, bogey being overstrokes. After that, we again we carry on over to the next level. From there, we again we check that it's game over. We then check whether or not the whole info exists. If it doesn't, then we print, hey, it's missing. If it does exist, then we go ahead and check to see if the level string has been set. If it has been, then we go ahead and we'll put a five second delay. You can change this to whatever you want. After the five second delay, it goes ahead and loads up the next level. If it's still set to none, we just say there's no next level set. That is basically it. Uh, I'll give you a quick example showing what happens if you go over. In this case, we have par three, which means you have three strokes. That's one stroke, two strokes, three strokes. Once the ball stops moving, game over, you ran out of strokes. Restart the level. Finish level three strokes because we got exactly the same. Birdie, finish level with two strokes. And there you have it. Thank you for your continued support. And uh, there will be an announcement coming up in probably another week or so. So uh, follow us on our Instagram or Twitter or our Facebook, or even hop into our Discord. Uh, thank you again.